Okay, we're back out here. Um, I put the firewall plate in, fuel pressure gauges in, sway bars in, ECU's mounted, headlights are mounted, bumpers mounted, belts tightened, car has a base tune on it, and uh, coolant's getting blood. So these two things are gonna be last. I'm gonna get the fuel, my switch back here. The, I'm gonna run a switch from the relay up to the front just so I can just flip the fuel pump on whenever I want. And then I'm going to fully mount my seat. That's an issue for another day. And I'm gonna clean the car off. So I'm gonna take a break, but as of right now, this is what's going on over here. I use the port on the side of the fuel pressure regulator to install this uh, gauge. Um, and because of that, I couldn't put it in its original location. So currently it's just uh, kind of zip tied to the clutch line. Don't recommend that, but uh, it's what I could do. But the thing right now is, here, let's turn on the fuel pump. Yep, that's as high as the pressure will go. And the car is running stupid rich at idle. It was at 10. So I'm guessing either there's a couple options. One, leaky injector, which is why fuel pressure isn't going up any higher because it's leaking past the injector and that's where the pressure is leaking off. Two, bad regulator. Three, a leak somewhere in the system, probably in the fuel tank off of one of the lines on the fuel pump. Or four, bad fuel pump. So I guess it's the possibly an issue with the entire fueling system. So either I'm going to pull these injectors off and get them cleaned and tested, which these injectors should be able to handle the power I want. I mean, I don't want much power out of this car. Just a little overstock is what I want. Um, I think I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna pull the fuel pump out, make sure that the uh, everything's good there. And then, then I'm gonna put it all back together and test it. And if it's still having issues, I'll replace the regulator. And if it's still having issues, I'm just going to replace the whole system, the whole fueling system. So, but as of right now, I'm going to take a break because I just got that regulator installed. There's the firewall plate that I got installed. So definitely better than a giant hole there. And then as of right now, I've just been trying to, uh, oh yeah, last night I took it out or a couple nights ago, the upper radiator hose split. So I went to a store and I got two elbows and then I just connected them. So this is the repair, it shouldn't be leaking or anything like that. And uh, just need to bleed out the coolant system again, which sucks. I've been going through so much coolant because of random leaks and stuff. I, I thought for sure this would have leaked before that, but because I've got multiple caps, I've got the caps on both sides of the heater core. There's a cap on the bottom of the radiator, a cap right here. And then instead of replacing that hose, I capped it off. So it's one, two, three, four, five, uh, like, vacuum caps that are just sealing off coolant passageways so but yeah it just uh instead of a constant hose it just has a, a fitting right here where it just connects them so uh i was going to take it out tonight and do some pictures and stuff but with the fuel pressure issue i don't want to do that but the easiest thing to do is going to be pump back here so i'm going to probably come back out here and pull the uh, the pump out and take a look at that, make sure there's nothing off with that. Back here, I've got, I'm starting to pull this apart. I don't have pliers out here, they're at work, so I'm trying to figure out how to get these hoses off and then we'll be moving on to the next thing. Also, I've been still having difficulties with the stock ECU, the fuel pump was priming and turning on when you would crank the car over, but with the Apexi, I don't hear the fuel pump at all. So I'm getting kind of tired of the issues. So what I did was I bought this, which is just a switch that holds 25 amps, just an on off switch that I got from the parts store. When I want to turn the car on, it'll basically just be like a kill switch. And it's better to have the fuel pump have full power at all times. One second. There was a helicopter passing by. It's better to have the fuel pump have full power at all times. Um, I'm fine with a little extra strain. This car's not gonna be getting driven enough for it to really matter. So we're gonna do that. But for now, I'm gonna try to get these fuel lines off and get this pump pulled out so we can see exactly what we're working with. So looking at this, we've done quite a bit. 
I want to get these two things done today and the seat fully mounted. So let's uh, just get to it. Also, finally, finally, all the tints cleaned off. My window's nice and clean. Um, I gave the car a nice wipe down, wiped down the wheels and the windshield and the interior. So the car's feeling clean. Um, I've been watching some videos and I really want to get this interior fully back together just because I like the way it looks when it's all together. So I'm rambling. I will be back with you right when I have all this apart. So see you in a second. All right, I got it out and I officially hate the old owner. So what it looks like he did is he chopped the hanger off and he didn't flare it again. So the fuel pressure literally just pushed the line off the fuel pump. So, but it looks like I don't need to upgrade. This seems to be a 340, 350 liter per hour fuel pump. And that's plenty uh, for anything I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna get a new hose and I'm gonna call around and see if someone can flare this for me because I don't have the tools to do that. So I'll be right back and we'll see if we can get this flared. And once that's in, I'll run the switch to the fuel pump, mount my seat, and then we're going to go get some rollers of this car if we can. So if we can get that done, then tonight's rollers. Okay, so uh, I ended up getting a flare put on the end of this line here. Um, it was a bit lopsided, but it should hold. Um, and then I was going to get a new hose, but the diameter I got was too small, so I'm reusing the old one. Um, I tightened the clamps down a little extra, hopefully not too tight, but they are bulging quite a bit. But whenever, when I loosen the clamp, it just feels really loose. So this is where I'm gonna leave it. Um, I'm not gonna bolt anything down just yet. I'm just gonna slide the lines on and um, prime the fuel system and uh, see, hopefully we have pressure and hopefully it's not um, busting out these lines at all. So for now, I just cleaned off the filter, you know, some brake clean, you know, always does the trick. And uh, then I'm gonna throw this back in the tank and see what we can get and see if we get fuel pressure. So let's see. I wasn't getting power to the fuel pump. Come to find out the uh, amazing crimps that the previous owner did are just, you know, perfect. Like I would trust this thick and thin, like, yeah, so. Uh, needless to say, I'm going to cut this crimp out and then uh, I guess extend this wire just a little bit and uh, I guess we'll have uh, two crimps here because I'm going to need one to extend the wire and one to attach it to this. So if you didn't do it, don't trust it. So I'm going to cut this out, fix this and see if our fuel pump starts pumping. But first let's spray it off with some brake clean. <laughs> because we're gonna need to use heat shrink on this. And not that brake clean's not flammable, but brake clean evaporates quickly. I think fuel does too, but either way, let's uh, just snip, snip, get this fixed and see if the fuel pump works now. I didn't have the uh, means to depin it and fix the uh, issue uh, here, so I took it to work. And now I got this janky harness that uh, should provide power to my fuel pump. And then I have the ground that I made up for the, uh, the switch I'm installing for it. So let's go uh, plug this in and uh, see if we can get fuel pressure and see if I can bleed the cooling system and take it back to work because I'm on my lunch break right now and I want to drive it and it's the last nice day of the year. So let's see what we can do. What's up, my fellow peoples? Um, welcome back to my FD RX-7. Today, we are got something in the mail. Um, something I have been waiting on. Something that's a little... Uh, makes the car a little more legal, per se. But it is this. This is the F100 box for the 91 to 95 model year RX-7s. And it's what controls my turn signals, the alarm system, my pop-ups, and a handful of other things. But we're going to start by figuring out where exactly this goes, where it plugs into, how it mounts up, because this was completely missing from the car. And with this plugged in, maybe we can have 
functioning pop-ups, which is something I'm really excited for, and turn signals and brake lights and a more legal car overall. So let's take a look and see what we can find. Hello, my ghouls and ghoulian friends. I have found where it plugs in using the power of Google. So it plugs in up here. I don't know exactly how it mounts, but uh, this is plugged in enough to at least get a test and see how it goes. Uh, it looks like it's just the two prong connector, this uh, kind of creamy colored connector, and this one. This one doesn't have any pins in it, and it doesn't appear to have any pinned female connectors on the inside, so I don't think anything goes there. But um, somehow it mounts up here. I'm not 100% sure. Um, maybe like horizontally like, like uh, up here somewhere, like where I use this spot for a zip tie or something. I don't know, but now we can go back and let's uh, connect the battery and see if we uh, get any weird things going on and maybe, just maybe, uh, these pop-ups will fucking go crazy when I, nope, pop-ups did absolutely nothing, which, uh, is fine too, I guess, um, but let's, I got the key, got the keys, jingle, 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 um, let's put the key in. Oh my god! I have turn signals! The car's more legal now! What is the buzzer? Why why is there a buzzer? Does that box have a speaker in it? Why is it mad at me? Oh my god, wait, that means I wired up the taillights correctly. I didn't, because the red is flashing too, but I wired it correctly enough to where taillights work. Oh my god, it's so mad at me. Let's check the left, oh, the left side's wired even even more wrong. The the orange is, oh, if I remember correctly, that, that connector's bad. But I have turn signals now, which means that driving around is much is gonna be much nicer. Um, one more thing, I'm gonna need you guys to watch for me. Uh, let's see if I can set you up in a way where you can watch this. Are you guys good? Are you, are you looking at the car? See if these work when I step on the brakes. Yay, yay. Let me check. Okay, sorry for the incessant noise. That thing was fucking annoying. I'll probably try to like turn down the audio there, but um, brake lights still don't work. Pop-ups still don't work, but I got turn signals. So that's a much better thing than not having turn signals. And my thing also is I'm missing my pop-up button. Normally there's a button right there that controls the pop-ups. So maybe, because when RX-7s, you can decide what position you want the lights in, um, maybe the lights are just in the up position, because I don't have the button that controls them. So, um, I'm going to find the thing, the, the connector, and see if I can jump it to see if the lights will go down. But that'll be uh, later. For now, I just wanted to get that plugged in, see if I got turn signals, um... It has been getting colder and colder out. That's why I have the garage door closed, but this place isn't insulated or anything, so it gets pretty chilly in here. But uh, I think we should see that soon where I try to get the pop-ups fully functioning and then I try to move on. And there is one more thing that I'll be doing later on in this video, and that is right here. Um, this little screw right here, that guy, can readjust my idle. So I'm gonna be messing around and seeing if I can get my idle to be correct. And uh, I saw a way to actually adjust the TPM, the, the throttle position sensor, but it's very complicated and it has to do with like 
messing with the one wire and then the another wire and then the other wire and the wires. And I, I'm so sick of wires. Um, so those are the two things I'll be dealing with in this video, trying to get the car to idle better and trying to get my pop-ups and the rest of my brake lights to work and stuff. It is possible that my brake light switch has failed or not plugged in or anything like that, but I'll be looking at that tomorrow. But today it's Thanksgiving. So uh, happy late Thanksgiving, because I know this definitely won't be coming out, but I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next clip where I'm trying to do a little more to get this thing a little better. And then I'm charging up my GoPro, so there should be some driving clips in this too, as long as it doesn't snow and they don't salt the roads. But even if it's not in this car, I definitely will have some driving clips of the FC, which will be another video that'll be coming out probably next week or the week after. It'll be the week after next. Um, we have some news for the FC, and we decided we were going to do a five lug conversion, which is why we have these wheels over here, these are the original wheels for the FC, the 14 inch ASWs, which were OEM. So we're gonna be selling these. And we took the wheels from our Mazda 3 and put them on the FC and got, I have to say, looks pretty good, but uh, we need to lower it a little more. And with the eBay coils, there's only one way. So see you guys in the next clip. And I hope you guys enjoy this build so far. Flip the fuel pump on. So as we can see, when the O2 sensor reads, it's decent right now, but it will quickly drop to around 10. And it stays there even after it's warmed up. So the thought is that if this adjustment screw is not letting enough air in the car will be giving the same amount of fuel and given making it too rich because it doesn't use the o2 sensors to decide air fuel ratio when it is this cold and it will be using the map pressure only so let's find a screwdriver real quick ignore the incessant buzzing i don't know why it's doing that i bought it off ebay um, but i will figure it out and let's find a screwdriver and adjust that so adjusting this. The idle definitely got a little bit higher. AFRs are still at 10, 10.3. I wonder if this is just gonna keep going. Idle seems too high now. Oh, but the AFR has gone down to 11, or up to 11. So maybe <laughs> we're just gonna be idling at fucking stupid high RPMs. See, the, the, the crappy part is my RPM gauge doesn't like to work, so but this is definitely helping. So maybe I just have to uh, readjust my, uh, or gotta do that the wiring stuff with the, the throttle position sensor. And maybe that'll help because if we keep going up with this, obviously idle's gonna keep raising. Now it's like you're revving the car. Of course, we don't want it just idling this high all the time, but AFRs are almost at 12, so this could be a throttle position sensor issue on why it's idling so rich all of the time. Of course, uh, there's the fuel pressure, which is going to be at somewhere between 30 and 40 PSI. Um, I'm going to double check that, set it as a baseline and then fully remove the fuel pressure gauge because unless I custom make a bracket, there's no way to have the regulator and the gauge there because right now this 
isn't mounted, this isn't mounted properly, and that, I don't like that. I would rather the regulator be mounted against the firewall, and with the gauge on there, there's no way to do that. So, but here we go. Uh, it is idling. This is too high for idle, and you can hear that it's still popping a bit, still, like, possibly, like, a little bit of a misfire. Hear the popping in the exhaust. So, there's a, there's a stumble there. We did confirm it's somewhat of an issue. Maybe if we close the hood, everything will just be fixed. Fixed. AFRs are better, but realistically, I'm going to be doing more to uh, fix this issue. But for now, I'm going to go uh, go get cleaned up and uh, try to research this, uh, this topic a little more, and I'll get back to you guys on how exactly I plan on fixing this. Guys, I, I think I'm dying in here. <coughs> like, the door's open, but... I think I need a fan or some shit because that 10 AFR is, it's killing me. It's killing me in here.